Hello! Welcome to another video. I know, I can't believe it. There was supposed to be three of us, only two. And uh, you can probably hear I'm not alone and uh, he's over there setting his shelter up right now. Pete, aka Maverick Outdoors, Mind Ooh. Wise Man. Founder of the Maverick Explorer. Say hello Pete. Hello Pete. Oh, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> So uh, yeah, it's all good in the hood. Um, we just arrived on site, and uh, guess what? I forgot my hat. So we're going, we're going boldy white boy today, and uh, really hot and sweaty. It's a uh, 30, 32 plus at the moment, and um, yeah, it's important to uh, take a lot of water on board, you know. Anyway, I'm not going to waffle too much. Just wanted to say hi. Here we are. We're on site. We're going to be setting up now, so I might show you a little bit of uh, what we're up to in that regards, but. Uh, Sure, it's good to be back, hey Pete. It certainly is. It really, it is, really man. is, mate. Touching yeah. base and what have you. Yeah, yeah. In the great outdoors where we all belong. <laughs> awesome. Right, we're trying something completely new now. Um, I've never used one of these before. Um, funny enough, it all started when my partner, when we was out to a car boot about a year or so ago, um, we found one. It's a bit beat up, in you know, a grade two condition. Um, Northern Ireland Patrol Pack in DPM camouflage. And um, I always quite like the idea because it, f it filled in that gap between the great big Bergen and my EDC bag, you know. 35 litres, plus I put something extra on the front, but we'll touch on that in a sec. But I thought, mate, you know, that's a, that's a good sort of uh, style and um, size of pack to have. Um, DPM camouflage, um, it's almost brand new. So the, the IRR, the infrared resistant qualities will actually work very well on this. In my findings and um, experience and trials and tribulations with kit over the few years or so, if, you, if you're lucky enough to get brand new kit which is infrared resistance, that will actually work. If you get really old kit, um, the chances are that IRR is not going to work as, eff as effectively as it should. So we've got an almost brand new pack courtesy of um, Russell at the prepper meet. Thanks buddy. Um, all I've done is I've put um, a Minimi PLCE DPM camo pouch on the front. It's almost like a molly system on the PLC, the front where you've got some loops, attachment points. And all I've done, I just want to see how it fared before I went permanent on it. So it's just, just a trial for me. I've used two utility straps threaded it's not coming off of there it's just wanted to see how the weight distribution fared um, and if it worked out well I'm going to sew this on there permanently with some really strong thread so that's the idea to um, go that way and um, yeah also that's been securely tied in there we'll go over that again if I remember later on so yeah a 35 litre pack plus that on there I don't know what that's probably five litres or so so we're looking at a 40 litre capacity and um, that's all I've got this weekend and there's still quite a bit of room in there and space so I'm trying to go down that road of um, trying to create and modify an inch system I'm never coming home system of um, load carry now I am looking into um, PLC webbing which I've currently got and it's in the process of being modified to what I actually need that's another video but we will talk about that at some point so it's going to be PLCE webbing and this, that's it. Um, I find it, um, I feel I'm going to find it easier to move over a distance um, without kidding yourself pretty much because the, the notion of putting a hundred pound pack on your back and never coming home and moving all over different trains and countryside and urban environments, um, if you're not 19 years old and you haven't done SES selection I think you're going to seriously struggle so being a realist I'm trying to trim down the weight the size and to live with what I'm actually got on there essentials that's another video but I'm trialing out the pack okay so this is all it's going to be I'm doing an overnighter with this pack to see how I fare what I like what I don't like um, here's the back Nice and straightforward really, you don't want anything um, too crazy. Now all I've got in there is um, the 
pouch is here. That's as much as I want, and I don't usually like um, putting uh, pouches on kit. So that's why, if this works out, it's getting sewn on there, so it's right. But I'm not a fan of attaching packs to packs. I hate it. I just want one big bag. That's it, all right? So if, as I say, if that works, it's getting sewn on. So it'll be interesting to see how we fare with uh, doing some tabbing with this. Well, I just wanted to show you that before I emptied it all out and started setting up my shelter. So uh, I think um, first things first, because um, um, we're not in hostile environments, etc., we're going to set the shelter up right now. All right, so that's what I like about this. It's really straightforward, okay? And it's the same with the, uh, the PLC Bergen. You've got two draw cords, one inner and one outer. So we do the outer one, that's the final cinch down, then the inner. Now I'm not sure what the terms of this, I always call it or refer to it as like a snow guard. So if you're unpacking or packing the kit and it's hacking it with snow everywhere, you don't want to get wet inside your kit. So sometimes you find these which are sewn in. It's a thin, lightweight, waterproof seam on the top, that seal. Now, at the moment, I'm still out whether I like it or hate it. So if any of you guys have got these, and um, what are your thoughts on this um, big uh, weather protective sock? A good thing or a bad thing? Put it in the comments and uh, be interesting to see your thoughts. Um, first things first, obviously you want to get a ground sheet. I've been using these for years and do you know what? Um, when I bought these uh, parachute wraps, I've, I've spoken about these before. I got these, I think they were five pound each and I had access to about 200 of these. I think I've got about 20 or so in total. Only recently have I found out you can get these on eBay, they're quite rare, and they're going for £40 each. So, hindsight, it's a beautiful thing. If I would have known, I would have got loads of them. <laughs> and probably sold them and made some money, or given... I've gave them some of these to friends already, so... A couple of you lads know who you are. I hope your kit's going well. And, uh... There you go, Pete, remember? <laughs> with the highlight little reflector. Yeah, the highlight reflector, the it highlight of my day. By Mindwise Man. <laughs> That's the Mindwise Peapot. You can uh, have, peapot. have peace of mind while you're having a pee. As I say, I absolutely love this design because it's flat, so you can literally sit it down. You haven't got to hold it. You just drop the little chap in, have a pee, and you're good to go. I'm not too keen on the round ones that roll around everywhere. That just sits there. The only drawback is, is the top. Like I found out on my previous overnight video, um, that went over, and as it did, that popped off and boom, pee everywhere. So if I could figure out a way to stop that coming off or secure it or put something else on there, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident I'll have a really good pee bottle. So pee bottle, absolutely awesome idea. We've got a basher. Um, I put, always put these in the, um, the jungle sleeping bag compression sack. Military issue, awesome. Um, they're waterproof pretty much and um, you can cinch them down to all sorts and you can get these for five pound each upwards depending on condition. So I'll keep my basher, my paracord, bungees, etc. all in there, tied up square away. Keeps all of the crap and water off of all of your kit nice and secure and safe. Got some rations trimmed down. These are the new, latest um, British Army ration packs. They come in bags instead of boxes. Um, pros and cons, obviously they offer little protection compared to the um, cardboard box. But the upside is if you needed to move water, you've got some water storage there, okay? And other applications I'm sure you can dream up. So I've got enough food for what I believe I'm going to need for 24 hours out in the bush. So that's always good. And my sleeping bag. Now I did put my sleeping bag in the compression sack. And it was getting a bit of a pain to actually put it in this little sack. So do you know what? I'll just push the whole thing in there. 
Um, quick, easy, simple. It hasn't got a huge loft because it's a jungle one, it's really thin. So it's just gone straight in there, padded out the bag nicely, a normal kit goes inside. That's the main compartment. Other stuff, I've got um, a self-inflating army issue, three quarter length um, roll mat. And I've got all my cook kit, um, Crusader bottle, 58 pack mug, um, little uh, BCB cooker, etc. all in that pack there. And a knife, which I'm gonna be showing you in a sec, in the top there. Hello, basher walls. You love me now. <laughs> We've got some DD tarp going on there, and we've got the old DPM going up. And we've got a couple of bungees. Bungees are always good. I've got loads of paracord in here, but do you know what? Why is it? Bungees just went out, don't they? Yeah, they're just so convenient, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I can keep cutting that and heating the ends up and getting different lengths and getting different everywhere. Or I can keep them for emergencies. Um, I'm pretty good with my knots now. I know what I need to know. Basics, another one. And uh, yeah, I haven't got one of those auto bashers. You remember that video? Right, here's the bag. Always keep it in ear shot, eyesight. Can you see me? <laughs> Alright, so we're going that way. I'm gonna have old school, I'm having waterproof on the outside. We're not, we're not forecast any rain. So there's no need, is there really? Going with the eyelet. Wow. <laughs> Hello, sweaty Peter. Hello. Perspiring feet. <laughs> Perspiring <laughs> feet. I think that's more like it, right? I think we'll have to come back and sit when Uncle Pete's done his bit. Okay, so the bash has been set up. Nice. Let's go in for a little walkie tour. So this is life underneath the beautiful DPM of the Great British Woodland. And um, Pete's gone with a DD tarp. Um, I'm not sure what the, what do they call it, Pete? It's like a multi-cam uh, or yeah, something? Yeah, I think it's, it's DD multi-cam, which they just call it their multi-cam. Yeah, I'm interested in this. It's quite, it's quite good actually. I quite like the, the tones of that. It's bigger than the um, three by three. Yeah, yeah. And it's even lighter than the military issue tarp that we've always used over the years. Yeah, yeah. So when I look at it, I'm thinking of MTP with this together, so as a combination. But um, as you can see, there's the DPM camouflage, and there's the trees, and there's Pete's alarm. You got to take your medication, Peter. You know what the doctor. You know what the doctor said. Oh, that's better. <laughs> It'd be right in a minute, chaps. <laughs> Back to his normal self. So, uh, yeah. So there we go. All right there, young man. All right, chaps. So, nice to meet up with Daz again. Little camp out. Yeah. Social, all, bit of a technical chat and what have you. All good in the hood, mate. Yeah. So, yeah, this is our little gaff for the next 24 hours plus. And, uh, yeah, man, it's so hot. <laughs> Bloody believe it. I've seen Pete lose about two and a half litres in the last 42 minutes. <laughs> you know, we should keep this water and boil it up for a brew later on, mate, you know. Recycle. <laughs> yeah, I won't be adding salt in my food when I'm cooking, no. I'll just add my sweat. Oh, do you know what? Yeah, we was just chatting, right? And uh, hold on, I'll swing around. Yeah, we was just talking about um, salt loss through perspiration because it is damn hot and really humid. It's, it's 90 plus humidity out here today and it is literally just coming off in buckets. So when you think about, yeah, you're losing salts, you have to replace your salts. And I thought, ah, what a weird turn of events. Um, at the prepper meet, Rob, RDP project. G'day, copper. He hates that. <laughs> I can't help it. Every time we you know, offer people from different parts of the world, I always mimic their accents. 
So uh, yeah, Rob's from um, Australia, Australia, as they say. And um, he put me onto Nordic bacon. And um, a couple of lads at the prep meet tried some of Rob's Nordic bacon. And um, I believe um, from the messages it sent me um, Sainsbury's and Asda. And it's four quid, or just under. Um, and you, you basically just take it out of his vacuum sealed pack. You slice it to any thickness you want, you grill it, and um, you cool it down, take it off backpacking or whatever, and uh, you've got some awesome trail bacon. And I'm gonna show you some, because I've got some in a minute. And um, I thought, do you know what? We were talking about sweating, because it's topical, <laughs> typical. <laughs> and uh, a good way to replace your salts. So uh, let's check out that bacon. <laughs> You're right, mate. Oh. Yeah, taste that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's sweating like a oh, PIG, son. I know, mate. God, dear, it's man. hotter than a snake's ass, I think someone it called is, it on yeah. one film. Mind once. you, I've never been around a snake's ass, so I'm not sure. No, no. <laughs> Don't look now, but behind you. <laughs> snake's ass. <laughs> right, so here we are. All I've done is I've just got a bog standard CD bag, okay? Get yourself tons of these, you get them by the thousand on eBay. They're so good for all sorts of things. Always reuse them, square it away in your pocket, and the obituary or obligatory, I'm terrible with words, paper roll, and here we go. Bacon. Oh, so that's all I've done is I just sliced it up and I grilled it. Okay, nice and straightforward. I didn't want to do thin slices, I wanted to do thick ones because I wanted to see how it'd fare and uh, if this turns out all right i might see if i can jerky or dry or dehydrate some of this at some point so uh, let's see i've never had this before this is going to be an honest review so let's see so here we are mate mm. did you want to take your pick of anyone no yes of course I <laughs> <laughs> he's going first one so we've never had this before this is literally the it smells first one. smoky but not too smoky it's yeah. got a nice smell right i think that top bit's going to be like the, the skin so that might be a bit chewy so i'm going to go yeah. for the bottom underneath Oh my god, it's like gammon, isn't it? Mm. It's alright. It's, it's nice. got a smoky taste, isn't it? Do you reckon mm. it's smoked? Beech or oak smoked? It's got, that it's sort got of some sort of smoky effect mm. to it. It's alright, mate. It's nice, goes down well with my slushy, slightly melted frozen this. Oh, yeah. In Tom, the freezer. Someone just told me about that frozen process about. Put it in the freezer mm. and took it out this morning when I packed up my bag. And obviously it's going to start to defrost, but it's really ice cold and it's like slushy now. It's all nice and icy and drinkable out the straw. So it goes down a tree. So that's just a little hint if you're going to take fruit juice with you. Or if you can actually consume it earlier, you can pull the lips up, cut it. Well, if it's at home, obviously with a pair of scissors. Mm. Or if you've got scissors in the great outdoors or your bushcraft <laughs> knife. And then you can just suck it out like a, the old school jubblies in the old days. It used to be in a triangle pack. You used to get for about yeah. sixpence, which is two and a half P. Oh, it shows my age, doesn't it? But yeah, it's all right. I mean, this is nice. It's a good idea to sort of have sort of frozen drinks, mm. like my milk as well. Mm. Put that in the freezer. Um, but Darren was saying, did it not swell? Because sometimes we put things in the freezer that are liquid can actually swell and break the, the seal. But I think if the container that's containing whatever the fluid is before it freezes, if that's strong enough, you're not going to get any container damage. So yeah, it no, works all right. Yeah, mm. happy days. Mm. So as far as replacing salt, because mm. you're sweating like a PIG out here. And that protein, mate, checking up here. Yeah, it's a good move. And I think that you don't have to keep that hydro, um, sorry, um, refrigerated. Mm. We can wrap that back up sealed away from all the flies and that. That should do us. It's nice. That's good stuff, thanks, Rob. Good stuff. Yeah, this cheers, is, Rob. This is actually Polish bacon. I couldn't find the other stuff, but um, it's just as good. It's really nice, isn't it? So, yeah. a thumbs up from us. Yeah. Cheers, mate. <laughs> cheers. Awesome. Well, it's nice to get the um, the bashes all set up and uh, one less thing to worry about, as it were. And um, it's really minimal weekend, so there's hardly any kit with us, to be honest. Um, it's going to be self and plate mat, DOS bag, just do that later, there's no real need to do it now. Um, we've also brought some hammocks as well, because, uh, you know, in the current climate, you know, not the weather, but the climate, as in fear crap everywhere, it would be nice to just get away from it all and just swing in a hammock and just breathe in the good stuff. Right. Before we do that, as I promised, I've got a knife to show you. Now, ah, how sweet is that? Kindly, very kindly, and generously given to me by a guy. I'm not going to mention his name. He's currently serving 
in the US Marine Corps, so we're not mentioning no names. Um, he is due to retire soon, I'm not saying when. But, um, he sent me this uh, because he loved watching my videos. And uh, bro, you know who you are, I know you're watching. I can't thank you enough, um, I've looked into this. Um, they commonly refer to this knife as the Bob knife from Tops, the Brothers of Bushcraft. And um, I'm not gonna do a separate video on this because there's tons of videos about this. And um, you know, they're all the same information so there's no point. But very briefly, that's nice. And there's actually sharp on the end there. And um, that's where you use your ferro rod. Uh, I've never been a big fan on using the spine of a knife to start fires all the time. Um, so there you go, a nice sharp tooled piece of the um, tang, lanyard hole, divot for bow drill, both sides, so whatever direction you want to spin, there you go. I do love these thumb impressions, so if you're going sideways like that, that's great, and like this. So it's just another option to grip the knife with confidence, okay? Now this is, and I'm not joking. <laughs> all right, Pete. Oh, sorry, mate. That's all right, dude. <laughs> I just broke some wood. <laughs> Watch out for them floorboards, mate. That, that is scary sharp. And I was just showing Pete, right? And um, I'll show the, the extras that come with the um, sheath. You get a ceramic sharpening rod with this one. Um, I'm not sure if it's a, uh, I think it's custom, the sheath he got done. Now I'll remember it. Um, forgive me, mate. I've, I've left all the details at home with this. But no, that is so sharp. Oh shit. That is seriously sharp. All right. So, have to be very careful. And the jimping on the top. All looks good. And the handle is my favourite of all time, my Carter. My Carter is absolutely awesome. I just find it to be one of the best um, scale materials. And um, I'm not sure if these are removable scales. Um, but if they are, what I might do at some point, oh god knows when, I might get them sandblasted. Because if you get my Carter scale, canvas scale handles that are sandblasted, in my opinion, you can't get any better because of the grippability, if that's the term, is second to none. These are already really, really good and offer an amazing good grip on the knife. They're really good, but when you super pimp it with sandblastedness, they really are. They will stay in your hand. And we're talking sweat, rain, blood, etc. You will not let go of that knife, okay? It's awesome. So, let me just bring you down and show you the sheath and the attachments on there because I'm absolutely in love of it. And, uh, yep, if any of you people out there who own this knife, the Bob knife, then uh, I think we're all in agreement. It's an awesome blade. It really, really is. Sweet. Let's check this sheath out. Well, there she is. Sits in there really nice. And you've got that thumb press. So you can literally just drop it in there. Bits of a glove. We've got a ferro rod on the front there. Let me see if I can bring you in. Yep, ferro rod and a ceramic um, rod for sharpening. Of course, we've got some uh, elasticated shot cord. And I'll tell you what, this. If any of you are new to the knife game and maybe haven't used or tried um, ceramic rods, if you want to get a real fast sharpness to the edge of any knife, I can recommend these. Then you can spend whatever you want on these. You can get these from one dollar or one pound up to 50 pound or whatever you want to spend. But they are all basically the same. So all you do is you just hold it. And I like the way that you can grip your finger around it. Okay, so you can secure it. That's a nice touch. And basically you're looking at roughly replicating the angle or the edge angle on the knife that's already there. And you just turn it and you're just pretending that you're trying to shave off things, okay? You haven't got to go really hard, 
but be careful when you go this way. I'm not joking. Be very careful because you don't want to carve yourself up, all right? And so you haven't got to go really hard. And that will be, you could shave with that very, very easily. And I'm not exaggerating. Right, look around. What do you see? Bracken everywhere. But all what you see is serving a purpose to help us maintain some degree of concealment. So we're not going to be taking any from here. We're going to be taking them from somewhere else, which isn't going to affect our position. Um, just a short walk away. This um, is a lot more dense vegetation over here, as you can see. So um, it's a good time of year to use this for cam and concealment. There's, it's absolutely in abundance in, in here. So you can um, be selective from where you take it. Um, don't just take big clumps, just take a little bit here, a little bit there, so it doesn't look any different than what it always did, okay? Once you feel that you've got enough, um, straight back to our little hide and uh, we're going to continue to um, improve the cam and concealment of the situation. Here's a good point of note for all you newbies, okay? If you're going to be doing something like this, always make sure that your trousers are over your boots, creating a seal so you've got no chance of any bugs or nasties. Moreover, ticks, in this occasion, crawling up your leg and giving you potential nightmares in the near future. These, um, what I'm wearing underneath here, are called trouser twists. You can um, go onto eBay or Google trouser twists, military, and you will see. They're basically elasticated with a spiralised um, weave over the outside with a couple of hooks, and they connect together, and you can roll your trousers over and under them, creating a seal between the floor and your legs, okay? So we've got Gore-Tex boots, breathable, and we've got lightweight um, camouflage trousers with our trouser twists, no chance of any bugs getting in. And also, before I forget, I will um, go over real quickly about the insect repellent that um, we're both using out here. So let's go and harvest um, some of this bracken for our um, camouflage. Well, here we are. Um, loads of it everywhere. As I said, what you probably need to do is just to get a little bit here, a little bit there. It's really tempting to just um, strip, say, a five metre square patch of this because of local convenience, um, energy, energy um, safeguarding, etc. But I know it's worth getting little bits from everywhere because, as I say, if someone knows the area, they're going to notice there's a great big ball patch there and they're going to know something's going on because bracken just doesn't disappear for no reason. So we're going to get our trusty friend and we're just going to literally get our bracken and just chop, always chop away, all right? I don't want to be doing all of this because you never know, all right? So be careful, take your time and don't rush, all right? It's just effortless because it's so sharp all right if you do this with a blunt knife you're going to be expending lots of calories you could hurt yourself you can make noise and give your position away too all right so we're only going to take a couple from here and we'll move somewhere else and get some more always put your knife away when you're not using it don't fall into that trap of wandering around with it because use your imagination okay it's bad news so uh Let's go a bit over there and get some more. Also, before you put your knees down on the floor, especially if you're wearing these thin, lightweight trousers, there's a lot of brambles, okay? So just be a, <laughs> be a little bit selective of where you put your knees, unless you like to have um, wounds on your knees and blood and an infection, etc. Or sometimes don't kneel at all, just pop off, all right? all we do just move a little bit here and there gathering our materials and uh, put it to some good use Ugh, just 
rip that one. Yeah, this is good fun. Look at that. It's just touching 30 degrees. And uh, yeah, it's great wearing um, a t-shirt and a Ventol smock. <laughs> but yeah, that's the temperature. So we'll put that, gently place that down there, which brings me on to this. Now, some of you may be aware that there's a company in the UK called Avon. Ding dong. You know, don't you? Up in Scotland. Hello. Skin so soft. Now, I was put onto this a few years ago, and um, at first I didn't believe it. I thought it was a joke, because there's a lot of jokes and humour and wind ups, and it's all cool, you know. But no, this, this actually works. And um, Skin So Soft Original with Jojoba <laughs> Dry Oil Spray. Now, if you want to stop getting bitten by insects out in the woods, out in the bush, that comes recommended. Because um, if you haven't got any sort of protection in um, a climate like this right now, I said you're going to get eaten, and I mean big time. Okay, so um, the British Army use this, believe it or not. It smells a bit quirky, but um, it's reasonably cheap. You're looking at three pounds, give or take four pounds for something like that. And what I've used there, um, not a lot, that's done three overnighters. And I've got all that lot left. So it's good value, all right? So skin so soft, used by the British Army. No joke, no lies, no wind ups, this is true. Get it, get it in your kit, okay? And that will last you a long time. And if you're prepping, like some of us do like to prep, grab a pack of them, you know, because that will last for years and it will still work, all right? So turn up on the site, take all your clothes off, spray yourself, rub it, just let it dry in, get dressed again, put the trouser twist on, like I touched about, and um, put a smock on. I mean, if you go around unprotected, then, you know, you just have to be very careful. I mean, Pete is an experienced outdoorsman, and um, you've got to be very careful of getting um, scraps from brambles, um, little sharp sticky things from trees, insects, bugs, etc. So, yeah, it sucks, you know, but um, that's just what I've um, been trying to do years ago back in the military. So, um, just thought I'd say that before I forgot because it's very, very good, okay? Sorted. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is. Um, before I cammed up the hide, or attempt to cam up the, the hide as it were, was to walk around the areas where um, most people will be using footpath etc. And just to keep looking to see if we're visible. So that's a good, um, that's a good bit of practice. There's no point in, in my opinion anyway, there's no point in doing some camouflage on your position and then just hoping it's all right. You do need, if you've got a chance, if you've got the opportunity to um, to have a look from afar, use the opportunity, okay? Because you're gonna see straight away where you've made mistakes. So yeah, we're scanning and looking. Now, can you see where we are? Right, right, so that's where we are. We got the, a dark um, shape or shadow, which is where we're, we're lurking, as it were. So upon closer inspection, what do you see? You see straight lines to your left, just um, past that tree there in the picture, and to your right. So they're the things, and also, can you see the, um, the shadow on the bottom? On the floor. Now, to me, they're they're the things that stand out. So, if we can rectify those, I think we're doing okay.
Well, since the last time I was in Pamba Forest. Get out, man. Going back to Wilding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think I did one Good after skills. my first hip replacement, I think it was, when I used my um, engineer's pack that my nephew gave me with the two rocket pouches as well. Yeah. Just to let you know it's recording. Is it? Yeah, but it's all right. Is it? Yeah. It's all right. I was just going to say... Edit that bit out. No, that's all right. As I say, I thought I'd let you know, just in case you, you said something oh, a bit realize, detrimental. Mate. No, that's all right, because all I'm doing is I'm just showing the viewers my crazy attempts and trying to break this straight line up, and I'm failing, but you don't know to your try, right? Yeah, true, mate. Well, don't forget, I mean, it might be successful in one situation, but then depending on the materials you use in the type of setup, it might be totally different, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's the basic principles, but if things don't attack, they don't attach. If things don't stand up... It's just this big dark line as well. Yeah. I mean, I won't know till I stand back. I mean, you, it just depends on how much time you want to throw at it, really. Yeah. You know, you could be, you could um, think, right, okay, I'm going to dedicate two hours solid into doing this properly, or I could just do what I'm doing, just see how I go within the quickest time possible, mm. and just to see how effective it is. Mm. It might be rubbish, but you don't know till you try. And uh, that's why I'm filming it, just to see if I can uh, tell the cock ups. There's a little bit of a non-foliage around that area, but as regards the outline and that shadow, I think we've we sussed it, mate. Awesome. Ah, that's better. <laughs> Somewhat perspiring, old boy. Yeah, very, very warm. Put the old vest off again in a moment. <sighs> yeah, it's gone. It's, like, it's nearly come up to 31 degrees now. It's actually getting warmer as the, pre the evening progresses. Um, we've got half past five on the clock. And I thought, right, I'll just um, sling a hammock up real quick. Um, this, yeah, well, I know it's not MTP. Sorry, I know it's not DPM. But uh, it was made for my real good friend of mine, Mac, Eddie. Thanks so much, mate. You know, he made one for me and one for my brother when Eddie's heart attack. And to get us both out in the woods. Oh, man. They're brilliant. They pack up to nothing, Pete, these these um, hammock things mm. really good and it's just um paracord doubled over a couple of basic knots on there and my old um petzl climbing carabiners on there <sighs> i'll tell you what it is like like being out in the jungle baby yeah. it's hot as humid enough insects buzzing all over the place and then a hammock off the floor and part of me is thinking should i try and sleep in this now, I've, um, I've slept in a hammock, I think, twice in my whole life. I just can't do it. I sleep on my side and, um, you know, I really wish I could just practice the art of sleeping on my back, like the old Count Dracula guy. I'd love that, you know. But no, I just can't do it. I can get really comfortable, and, but you're tossing and turning and you've got to just an absolute pain in the ass sleeping in a hammock and I know you can lay diagonally and you've got all of these extra bits of kit to stop your back getting cold and for me it's just a big faff it's just too much involved um, but just for a little chill like this and to relax I mean it, Pete's throwing his up right now it's, uh, I'll tell you what Pete you, you do well to uh, stay awake, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to lower that bit down. Oh, Normally we've got a longer distance between the uprights. But here, yeah, mine's Eddie Mac as well. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I'll, I'll um, pan you around in a second. Uh, thanks to Eddie, yeah, Mac Tightwad, he's keeping uh, us off the deck, mate, away from the creepy crawlies and somewhat degree of comfort. And, uh, All right. It's absolutely very comfortable, actually. 
It's yeah. just nice to swing about a little bit. Yeah, I think I should do this more often because you know you, people who watch my videos when I do open like camps and stuff. I always sleep on a deck, never sleep in a hammock. But I do like the idea of chilling out in a hammock. I really, really do. Yeah, I'm the same, mate. I don't. It's wicked, isn't it? Sleep on a hammock. Just can't do it. I can. I would do if like it was flooded and you've got no choice and you say somewhere unpredictable, whereby yeah, yeah, then you'd yeah. have to get off the ground. Then I would. But I'd, I'm of ground. Yeah, Ground I think from, from an old military perspective, you get out and move quicker, can't you? Oh, mate, if honestly, you need to. if you if you sleep tactically in a hammock and you get sprung and you got a bug out and you get bumped or whatever, yeah. you are a sitting duck in a hammock. Yeah. The only time you should ever use a hammock is in jungle ops where you have to be off the deck. But you know, but you are high profile as well in a hammock as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm always I'm always under a basher. Don't really do tents. Um, but I do like try tents just to see. <laughs> <laughs> try to swing into shot. Oh my god! <laughs> You're gonna hurt yourself. I am. I'm gonna go full 380 yeah, degrees. I've got to show you this. This guy's a freaking lunatic. <laughs> there he is. Try to go. <laughs> All right. So oh, you, you see yourself on the old camera. Look. Oh yeah, I can see. I'm gonna there. jump on his way. Oh, uh, that's going to go peak time pretty sharpish, mate, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're talking about all this clandestine being stealthy, but you're wearing grey. Yeah, and I'm the grey man. <laughs> He's the grey man. I'm the grey man. Yeah, well, you put him in an urban environment, mate, he disappears, don't yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> I love putting the old camera up, right, and uh, just recording. And, uh, you know, Pete Besson is just... He's got... <laughs> <laughs> he's having a bit of a waffle. I thought he was having a conversation with me, you unsociable <laughs> git. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I didn't tell him what I was recording. And action. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we was just chatting about um, you know, the importance of getting away from it all and just finding time to just relax, you know. Relax the body, relax the mind. Get away mentally from all of that crap that a lot of us are going through. And, um, you know, I was just telling Pete about some of the comments that I'll get and messages over the years, um, not recently, but over the years. And um, it's really nice for the feedback, you know, when, you know, I or we do this sort of thing and we take you along and we put the effort into film it all, edit it all and all that sort of thing. And a lot of people appreciate it. And um, moreover, it helps people um, just escape all of the madness. You know, for the time watching this video, you know, I hope you're not thinking about all of the crap that's going on out there and, and all that sort of thing so um yeah it's a shout out to you guys really if you're struggling in any way i hope this is helping and uh it's certainly helping us mate isn't it mm -hmm. oh mate yeah oh jeez i love coming out and swinging <laughs> man you should see this guy swinging i'm having a gentle rock this guy's making a bloody long island nice tea in yeah. his bloody <laughs> hammock mate check him out <laughs> it's called the 45 it's swinging degree. and the two trees are going <laughs> 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 You'll be brown as pretty soon, mate. Look sharpish. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that I, I love about just getting at, at is just laying in a hammock, right, and just looking up and just seeing that beautiful DPM pattern of the basher. And on the edge of it where you can see all of the, the treetops, all of the different greens, the sunlight punching through. It's so bloody quiet, mate, isn't it? Hmm. You <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, someone got somewhat rough of an accent, old boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. so sausage and chips. Yeah. It's bloody marvellous, mate. Bit, 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 bit bean uh... Do you know what? I'm going to change the angle. This is going to be cool. So, this is a life, me and Darren. I've got our hammocks up. I brought it with me because I wasn't sure whether or not you know there would be an upright or a folding stool. And I thought, well, I'll bring it anyway. And Darren wasn't going to answer. I've got mine. And uh, he put his up and it's like, oh, yeah, this is the best bit of it. Forget all the stealth stuff and all the techniques. <laughs> <laughs> just this, we'll just video this for about 25 minutes and you can just all chill out at the same time. I'm on my uh, Eddie Mac. So you saw this the last video I did when I did the four day wild camp. I just got uh, a name drop for Eddie again, just saying my gratitude for giving me this off. I got over my first hip for replacement operation. And I've been using this ever since in my garden, also when I'm wild camping. But also, coincidentally, the one that Darren's using, also Addy, Eddie. Oh, Eddie give, give me a big push. There you go, mate. You look, you look like you need fucking very swinging much. a bit there, dude. Yeah, that's Sorry about the F word. That's okay. <laughs> there you go. So, Darren's <laughs> just give me a bit of a push. 
There you a go. bit of momentum. I'm not paying him any money. <laughs> Swingers of the world unite, eh? <laughs> so while we're on the oh, old hammocks, dear. you can see the footprint. Darren's filming himself for his channel. Yeah, it's just me filming you, filming me, filming you. Yeah, it all started when we did uh, Hurt Wood. <laughs> you, me, Animal and uh, Funky, you, Roach. Happy days. When it was, yeah, you filming me, filming you, filming me. Yeah, it's nice and relaxing. Dude, just to chill dude, out, dude, just be in the moment dude, mindful. Dude. So I like to practice what I preach. Darren's the same as well, we both get people that maybe can't get out but they'll watch our videos and our activities and things that they might have done they can't do anymore but you know enjoy the experience of just watching the wild camps the outdoors activities a bit of information with the prep survival that sort of thing which i haven't actually dabbled in as much over recent years it's mainly been my outdoors activities but then people also that get the incentive to want to do the same thing so it's all about getting outdoors connecting with nature it's such a good for well-being one's health and especially in this day and age especially since the beginning of this year, 2020, when there's been global restrictions. People's well-being has been stumped by having the restrictions of not being able, go out, and being able to go out. So I think sometimes people appreciate when they can't, they appreciate it even more. So... Yeah, well said, mate. Absolutely. It's very much on it. It's people sort yeah. of evaluate. It's when you don't have the thing you're normally used to. Help others. Yeah. On that note, I think I'll just chill for a bit longer before I have to make something to eat. <laughs> Scoff to the max. Is that one of your 25,000 calorie intake snack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To a pillowcase full of bacon grill, that's our peak, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that note... <laughs> <laughs> So what have you got? To, what have you brought to eat? Just the uh, twenty-four hour Russian pack. Yeah, um, I was just saying to you guys earlier, the ration packs. Um, as I say now, they're in plastic bags rather than in box. So my guesses are the MOD are cutting costs, but the the actual contents inside remain unchanged. So that's a good thing. So for all you guys who love your all-day breakfast like we do, um, all of the other beautiful delicious delights that await us that um you know reside within the 24-hour british army combat ration packet is absolutely second to none um i put them up there with the top three um best in the world to be honest and that's not mince in my words it's telling it how it is um the french i do like the french stuff um the british obviously and uh you know there's a few others but um you don't know till you try these things uh so there you go um, they're out there, and um, hopefully at some point I might be able to get my hands on some sort of um, rations, etc. And maybe just do a little video in the bunker just to show some of you guys um, the differences um, in the packaging, etc. And if some of you guys want to know where to get them from, I might have a look around and see if I can bring you along with that. Um, so I thought, yeah, okay. I'm going to try something new, and um, some of you guys know my thoughts about the um, fire dragon gel blocks now um, I've done various tests with these over um, a period of time and um, I believe that they're not uh, made or not very good for cooking but they're very very good for lighting fires in adverse weather conditions I've proved that beyond doubt it's an absolutely incredible piece of kit um, but today I'm going to give it one last try to see if I can find any value using them as a cooking fuel. Now the reason I'm trying this is BCB who do the Fire Dragon have created a cooker which is on issue to British forces currently. Um, replacing the hexi blocks, the hexman fuel and the stove. So I'm going to show you this pretty soon anyway. Um, you basically just open it up. Put your little windbreak in there open the gel block put it in there light it put your cooking vessel on top that should cook it uh, my experience in the past is um it's a very good um fuel providing you can tame it and use it to its best um advantages and applications um 
the problem I was having in my test, um, especially cooking, was the flame got so hot, so big, so fierce, didn't burn for very long, um, and found that it wasn't enough to even cook um, a boil in the bag MRE from the British military ration pack. So I'm going to try the new army um, little cook stove with it, and um, hopefully if it works, then happy days. But if not, you know, it's going to um, confirm my belief that, you know, it's a good fire lawyer, but a crap cooking thing. So um, we'll see how that fares later on. But for now, we're just going to chillax for a bit and uh, just have a bit of an unwind because it's been a bit of a crazy time, isn't it? Mm. Just the heat. Yeah. How you have managed. This man defies all human <laughs> instinct and behaviour. Me, I mean, yeah, Mr. Stealth Grey Man wearing light coloured clothes and strips of the waist. Shorts, boots and a vest and he's struggling. Rather that Full someone, combat. <laughs> well, rather that <laughs> and someone notice me than actually just get just absolutely fried and melt, which has been happening anyway. Mm. But, but yeah, it's been, uh, it's been nice just to... Uh, the temperature's dropped just a mm. little bit, and all the pressure, the warmth is still there, but that heat pressure. Yeah, that intensity has like drifted away a little bit, yeah. so it's, it's a little bit more tolerable now. Um, mm. But yeah, definitely sitting off the ground with some degree of very, very mild airflow mm. is helping loads. So um, mm. yeah, I might take a toddle down to the water bank just because it's it's really sunny and awesome down there. It's a bit mm. I don't know, a bit overcast up here, isn't it? Yeah, we shouldn't have gone so stealth, should we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we come out to the beautiful outdoors and made ourselves a house, yeah. thank God. Yeah, yeah we made ourselves so covert, we can't see anything and enjoy nature. Oh, there you are. Oh, right. <laughs> well, I was talking to a piece of bracken then. <laughs> right, so I thought we'd uh, have some coffee. And uh, this is the little piece of kit I was um, talking about earlier. That is the actual reservoir for these blocks to go in. So we're going to open her up. And um, yeah, we've got that little windbreak I touched on earlier. And we've got some graphics on the lids now. Um, back in the day when these were first made, they were just silver. So that's how they look now. Yeah, the, um, the lighting's a bit poor, so sorry about that. So, let me just make sure that's good. We're going to um, attempt <laughs> to get this going. So we've got our little stovey poos. I'm going to leave it open. Right, here we go. So this is our little um, fuel cell, as it were. Let's see if I can open it up. Wow, I do like that. It peels off really, really easy. So if you are talking, you know, you're up against it, whether blah 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 that's what you want you want something you can get to really quick now, oh wow you can definitely smell that fuel in there that alcohol that is seriously cold kicking chicken curry right there we're going to try the um the ferro rod idea with this knife so um it'll be interesting to see that on there how it'll work all right let's just see how we get on with that Right. Yep, it works. So, we're going to quickly put that away. Just takes, like most things I guess, it just takes a bit of practice the more you do it, etc. So let's move these out of the way. It's quite cool because you've got stages on that stove, which they lock in place. Uh, do you know what? I forgot to put the windbreak on there. But seeing as that we haven't got any wind, I don't really think there's going to be an issue. Something to remember for next time. Right. Lid on. And uh, on she sits. Yeah, that's the good thing about the, um, the little locking points on that um, stove because it will keep it keep it there rather than just fall in on itself. Well, there we go. Um, all looking good. Uh, I don't think it's uh, important that that goes on. 
Um, if any of you guys have got experience using these, um, please say um, if these are good. Um, personally, I'm guessing these are only going to be good if it is really windy. But we've got practically zero wind, five mile an hour tops, and that's just, it's nothing up here. Daz, I've used one of those. My oh, yeah. neighbor, military, gave me one. Yep. And it helps support even more so the angle that you put your cup on. Oh. So when that wedge is in, the overlap yep. goes on the inside. Yeah. And then when it fits onto the angle, it helps support so it just stops it collapsing as well. A bit more rigidity. Yeah, it's a bit heavy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. So if you're putting a heavier pot then, that will just reinforce it somewhat. Nice. Okay. And I agree what you're saying about the gel packs as well. They can sort of tend to fizzle out before you know it, they're gone. Yeah, I've, I've been saying it since day one since they've been making this stuff and selling it. And, uh, you know, when I found out that they was going to stop Hexy and, and use this as a cooking fuel, yeah. I just shook my head and nearly cried, to be honest. But, you know, that was only because no one really at that time could find a viable cooker that will... It was smokeless as well, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. That's... It's got really good things um, for it, from what I've um, learnt with it. Is um, yeah. it's, it's odourless, it's smokeless, so you haven't got the soot to clean off like Hexy. Yeah. Um, it, it apparently stalls well, but um, obviously time will tell. Um, I did, I have got some of the first generation um, BCB Fire Dragon um, fuel blocks, and um, they've been left sealed, and um, only recently, within the last three weeks, um, I've checked on them with other stuff and all of them the gel inside has turned into something about that size and gone rock hard everything's evaporated and it just rattles around inside the packet which is sealed so for long-term storage um, I'm gonna put my reputation on the line and say I don't think they're gonna store more than five years but I could be wrong it depends on the packaging if they really want to store them long term, from what I've um, found out, they need to revisit how these are packed. That's just my honest opinion. But as I say, time will tell. And um, I was shocked to see, you know, the packs were sealed. There's no holes, but you know, the little fuel cell had shriveled up like a bit piece of plastic inside. Yeah. And they were absolutely, you put a lighter to it and nothing really. I think as well, the temperature where they're stored as well can tend to make them go solid yeah more difficult to light because they're not liquidy and jelly yeah there's um there's a hell of a lot to understand about these um but yeah i think they're all going to have their their contributing factors you know um temperature phew, all sorts of things yeah awesome right well, um we'll see how we got on with this let's have a look at the uh we got some Little tiny bubbles in the bottom. Um, we're currently at uh, 3 minutes 30 seconds, so I'm going to cut here and bring back when it's boiling. Wait, well, I can hear. Yep, yeah, we're starting to boil now, so we're going to get our coffee bags ready. Love this stuff, thoroughly recommend it. Um, twos, one and one, none. <laughs> so yeah, get in there. Two coffee bags. Bosh, in you go, job done. And it looks like um, this little stove is working a treat. I might have uh, changed my outlook and view on this because there's definitely, yeah, here we've got a boil. Let's have a look. I'm going to one edit this because this is actually how it's happening now. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And uh, it looks like we've got a fair bit of uh, fuel to burn in there. So uh, maybe they've uh, done a good job on this. So far, so good. Right, so that's the coffee done. Um, I'll chuck three of these in. If you can find these, and if you like your coffee, sorry, your honey in your coffee, these are really, really good. Excellent. They're so easy and convenient to use. You just literally split the top, and you just push the, the honey in, job done. No mucky little pots that you get in those little hotels. It just gets everywhere, it's a nightmare. But, um, I did have a bit of a fail with this. I'm not gonna lie, one of the coffee bags split. Never happened before. And uh, 
that's got coffee grounds all over it. So I'm just going to stir it good now with the honey. Let that settle for a good 30 seconds and then I'm going to drink it slowly, hoping I don't swallow all them bits. <laughs> right, it's um, scoff time. Um, we've been gassing as you do and uh, it's time to get something to eat. Going nice and simple, um, just rat pack. And that's all I do is I just um, roll it up, throw it in, um, about a third fill of water. I haven't got to put a lot in. And uh, yeah, we're going again with the old uh, fire dragon stove. Now this time, as you can probably see, I've got the, um, the guard on the back. And like a car, Pete tells me, and uh, it kind of makes sense. Not only does it block the wind, it really um, stabilizes the stove as well. So, um, yep, sorry about all of the, the, the trickery of the light. Um, it's got really dark, really quick, and uh, it is what it is. So uh, hopefully we should be tucking into some chicken biryani very shortly. Right, we're done. Sorry if there's a bit of glare everywhere, but it is what it is. Mmm, that's a sharp knife. I like that. I'm just going to put that over there. Ah, let's see what goodness. Mmm, that looks disgusting. <laughs> Chicken and vegetable biryani. Mmm, I don't know if you can see that. Mmm, that so, what I've, uh, let's put it there. What I've found out is that one of those fuel blocks um, done this with um, probably hasn't lost any water. That's awesome. It's about a third of a cup of water um, screwed up, chucked in there, boiling with the lid on um, until the, the fire went out. And um, I'm hoping that this is really piping hot and cooked because if it's not, it will uh, back up my claims that these are shit to cook with. So. We're about to find out. Good morning. <laughs> it's ten o'clock. Like a right raspberry ripple, mate. Mm. You really wind up with a hunchback. <sighs> <laughs> so, did you sleep in a hammock all the way through? Yeah, that's why I feel like a raspberry ripple. Yeah. <laughs> Call them Bennett. Just remind me of someone, I can't quite place it. Oh, I said you remind me of someone at the moment, I can't quite. Nosferatu, that's it. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Ah, good morning. What a strange summary for the video. Um, we just got talking and it went way, way, way beyond our home time. And uh, we're uh, packing up. There's Pete lovingly folding the curtains. Thank you, darling. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's what biscuits brown do, so try and avoid them, chaps. <laughs> um, there's Pete um, reorging, squaring away his kit, double checking it all, making sure we've got nothing left behind. Always good practice. And uh, yeah, gonna miss this place. It's a fun 24 hours. And um, always leave no trace. Uh, there's my kit there. I think it's a, a Polish or a Czechoslovakian 
uh, grab bag, only about five pound, great bit of kit. Um, that's the ration pack with all of the rubbish in there. Um, great little um, backpack, love that patrol pack. I think I'm gonna be using that more often. And um, yep, yeah, that's all it is. The ground sheet was there, so I'm just gonna kick over the leaf litter. Um, after double checking, bah, excuse me, that is all good. But um, yeah, we've got absolutely amazing weather and um, we are absolutely sweating like little piglets. <laughs> it's unreal, isn't it? It's just flipping it's out. The I've known it on a camp for, since I can remember. Yeah, not used to this um, heat and humidity, mate, eh? But yeah, certainly makes you think about um, evaluating kit and equipment. So uh, I think the secret to that I've um, sussed out on this little outing is... Uh, don't take stuff you don't really need or you're not going to use. It's extra weight. You're burning more calories. You're going to sweat more, etc., etc., etc. So, um, yep, gone lightish. Well, for me anyway, and uh, yeah, all good. Well, so there we go. Yeah, I probably look knackered. I haven't really slept much. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, show you what's been going on. And you know, um, you know, when I, I come down to the, the stream, and it's all nice and chilled and etc. Well, it was soon apparent um, when we arrived here that that just wasn't going to happen. So uh, let me show you what's been going on here. So that's where we come down the path. Oh no, look, people have been leaving fires and not tidying it up. So um, we come down here. That tree has just been hacked off and that's been there uh, ever since I've been coming here, since 2012. Um, the stream, that's all seems fine. You know, there's green everywhere. There's felled trees just stuck there, I'm guessing for a temporary bridge. And this is heartbreaking. Look at this. The frigging gall of it. They sort of barricaded themselves in with a cheap wall using loads of green wood just gash everywhere and they pretty much didn't want anyone going in there because of this and I just think it's absolutely disgraceful I've got no idea how long this has been here but um, like my brother on YouTube says Ralph says we ain't having it and I'll tell you what, I'm not having this. You know, this is beautiful woodland and it's supposed to be for everyone to share and to leave it as they found it. So to cut down loads of green trees, string cord everywhere, and just absolutely decimate it, it absolutely breaks my heart. Um, I'm just gonna go in here now and have a closer look. I mean, who would get all of this stuff Bring it all the way here and just think you can just live here. It's absolute crazy. I mean, this is um, a quite a well used path along here, and lots of people use it to walk their dogs, etc. And already over there, it seems very bare. There's a lot of trees that have just been hacked down. It just makes me sick, real sick. And um, part of me thinks, you know, um, if I could get away with it, and two wrongs don't make a right, but yeah, I'd love to just pile this all together and set fire to it. I just think it's disgusting. But, um, I'm not going to do that. I just two wrongs don't make a right, as I say. Uh, I just think it's uh, terrible, really it is. Well, there it is. <sighs> Another long overnight video. It's a, uh, as I say, it kind of got cut short at night time. Um, we didn't really have lighted in place to film at night time and uh you know plus you know once we get chatting that's it and uh yeah we was gassing to what four four thirty this morning yeah mate yeah. and then uh probably it felt um like it was still the fresh <laughs> evening it was it was uh it was quite weird with the weather though because when i checked when i felt the coldest it was 16 degrees and on according to the forecast the lowest lowest it was going to get was 24 so yeah, it's always good to make sure that you've got something to keep you warm, even when you've got weather like this. It's happened to me before, and then that's why I brought 
Um, I've packed it away now, but it's the uh, Akamak um, base layer that I've got from Alfred Bushcraft. And uh, I slipped that on top of my um, 511 t-shirt and it was just enough with that jungle bag just to keep me nice and warm. Um, which is, it's horrible just laying in there in a thin sleeping bag shivering because it's a bit chilly. Um, but yeah, you can definitely feel the temperatures build um, this morning. I don't know, probably nodded on and off. I actually slept in the hammock, it was really weird. Kept sliding around, it was like, oh. But anyway, it's uh, an experience. I finally woke up about, probably about nine, eight, nine o'clock, something like that, and just dosed in the hammock to about 10. And I thought, no, that's it, time to get up. So I woke up, coffee, uh, beans and sausage breakfast, ball in the bag, nice and convenient. Oh, look how hot it is. Harder than a snake's ass. <laughs> and um, yeah, feel loads better now. Um, always good with our food and uh, a nice coffee. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting for Uncle Pete to uh, clear up and then uh, we're going to be out of here. But yeah, I just wanted to show you, you know, what was going on with that little camp down there. And uh, yeah, I've never seen it this bad. I've been here loads of times and uh, I think I remember on three occasions in total I've had to break someone's tent and then drag it out of here and get rid of it. But that, that's just a little bit beyond my capability. I just haven't got the time to keep coming down here and uh, taking bits and pieces away. You know, when are people gonna get it? Now you leave no trace, okay? So yeah, if anyone's um, inspired to do something like this, um, please, please, just make sure that you tidy up and there's nothing left behind, okay? You gotta think of the animals and people. All right, make sure they're safe. They're gonna be a lot safer if you don't leave beer cans, beer bottles, trip wires, and God knows what everywhere, all right? So uh, always make sure that you tidy up. Well, do you know what, mate? You know, when I'm 70, I hope I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair one. Hand luggage, or well, that feels a bit light, but about yeah, always make sure. three litres of. Right, 10 miles, go! <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, wait, look at this. Oh, wait, hang on. Lightweight, lightweight dazzler. You switch the camera off, haven't you? <laughs> oh, no, go back and get the camera. Bloody hell. I'm not even in shots, you know, I forgot how bloody little you are and how big I am. Yeah, anyway. when, when are you going to start filming? Are you going to film yet? Yeah, cut. It's done. <laughs> All <laughs> oh, right, now have you got everything, mate? Yeah, I have, mate. Right. Just about got my sanity. Yeah, we just get this. We've double checked everything, mate. It's all gone. Yeah, turn the switches off, unplug the plugs. Yeah, yeah. Take the kettle home this time, yeah, mate. Leave it on last time. I've buried the microwave, so we'll leave that for next time. <laughs> That'll work just sweet, won't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> turn oh, on it. Brilliant. Hokey quokey. All right, that's it. Well, thanks for taking along, everyone. And uh, yeah, we're sorry that Mike um, bailed at the last minute. He's got a lot on his plate, and. Uh, Unforeseen circumstances, he just couldn't make it in the end, but um, it was just that to stick with us two in the end, but yeah. uh, had a good time, mate. Yeah, it was so, good, uh, crack. Awesome. good time. We've only done something like this together since the old days a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Nice one, dude. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, awesome. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and stay funky. <laughs>